All right, what's up guys? Video four, it's Chromata 4 again. We're gonna go ahead and play something I've already created and then I'm gonna talk about it later. So let's just check it out. Here, the, the song pretty much repeats. It's kind of the simmer down. This is where my MC or myself would like to rap over it. Give you a little more of the message, break it down a little bit. Okay. All right, so that's something I cooked up. It's something I had fun cooking up. I like it, I enjoy it. There's a lot to it. It's not even completely where I want it to be yet, but I did a lot to it. I'm gonna just dissect it and show you guys what exactly I did and how exactly I made it what it is. So prior to this video, we created something from scratch and I showed you how to make it from scratch. I showed you how to sample that guitar, how to record it, how to put it into a mix. I showed you how to do rhythm, how to do bass, how to do melody, how to do harmony, how to do percussion. We did a lot, right? This is pretty much the same thing, but it's a different, it's a different cousin of that song. It's a different relative. So it has different essence, it has different frequency, it has different vibe. And because of that, you gotta be very careful with what you decide to do and what you decide to have happen in your music. So let's just go to the intro here. Or actually, let's go to the main, let's go to the main, I, I called it the chorus, it could be a verse, it could be whatever you want it to be, but I called it the chorus. So let's just play this real quick. Real happy, right? Real bouncy. Okay, and I'm just gonna play the main sample. Okay, so here's all the MIDI notation. And it's just an eight measure loop. So we're still in four, four, we're still in four, four time, and it's just an eight measure loop, okay? And it's just gonna keep repeating. What I did was I took a sample from something that I really liked to listen to, and I chopped it up, and I put it in different positions, and it's mostly a guitar. So let me just show you some of the samples that I chose. Okay, so those are the samples. There is so much more. I could have done triple of that. I could have made all kinds of different sounds, but I liked the guitar, I liked the flavor that it was giving me. 
I liked the essence that it was giving me. Now, believe it or not, this is pitched down. So this is changed in pitch. I'm gonna go ahead and put it back to normal. So when you listen to it now, this is how the sample that I got sounds normally, naturally. Okay, I'm gonna play all the samples again, just so you can hear them normally. Okay, so those are normal. That's how it normally sounds. And I pitched it down three semitones to get this. Okay. Now, I didn't want to just copy my samples. I didn't want to just play a loop and just have it So instead of doing that, what I chose to do was chop it up and pick different samples. So let me have the camera, camera guys in there. Go ahead and zoom into my pads real quick and make sure that my pads are shown. And I want you to just check out how I played this with my fingers, okay? See that? If I can memorize it. See, I can't even remember how I played it. It was just feel. But those are my fingers, okay? All right, so we have that main line. Now, a lot of hip hop heads, a lot of producers, they like to just take the thing that works and then they repeat it for the rest of the song. So it just keeps going and it doesn't change. I like to change that and I like to just have variation. So although this sounds cool, my samples are limitless. I could do so much with them. So I'm gonna go ahead and just flip it and just do something completely different. So for my verse one, I went and I played something completely different. Okay, let me play the one I just showed you before, just so you can hear the difference. Okay. All right. So it's a little variation. I'm not gonna say it's completely, completely different, but there is a difference, and it just makes your ear listen a little harder. And then I did the same thing to my verse two. So, Check out my fingers. There they are. So a lot going on on this one. And check out my pads. So that's my fingers there. Okay, let's hit that with the groove. Okay, so that's just the variation. And then I did the same with the simmer, <clears throat> the simmer section, as I called it. So totally chopped them up differently. They just have a different flavor. And I tried to get it as accurate as I can when it comes to the slicing of the chops. So by slicing, let me go ahead and go back to verse two. By slicing, I mean, all of the little samples. There's a sample right there. Look how tiny that guy is, okay? So I got these two right here. Got 
got that guy right there. And if you notice, my, my wave size is very tiny. It's very tiny because I don't want to normalize it. So this is this stuff called normalizing. And normalizing is when you take your piece of music, your frequency, and you bring it up to unity. You bring it up to zero. You bring it up to your zero gain point, okay? So if you take a look at my sample again, let me normalize it. So this program, this controller lets you normalize it. I'm gonna hit apply. And did you see how my wave just got super huge and it got super full? It normalized, it took everything and it boosted the gain. It boosted the loudness. So I'm gonna just touch it. I'm not gonna push play because I might blow your ears away. It got way louder, right? So I want it to be loud, but I want to bring that out in, I guess you can call it post. So I want to bring it out in all of the extra ways that I can. And I'll explain that in a little bit, okay? But there's your main line, your main samples. And just for fun, let's pitch it back up. So I'm going to mess with the pitch of all of the samples, and you're going to hear how it completely changes the vibe. Bring it back low. Ew, sloppy. Okay, so that was just preference. So I just decided where I wanted it and I picked the right place. I was going super high in pitch and I was going super low in pitch. But when you're messing with samples and hip hop producers in general, you just have that free wane and you can go ahead and create however you want. You can make anything sound however you want. So I chose negative three pitch on the machine. Okay? All right, so let's move on from the sample and let's go to the bass. Or I guess we could go to the drums. Let's do the drums instead. So my drums are right here. And I'm just gonna play the drums. Okay. Now, for the most of the song, for all of the song pretty much, except for like the intro, it's doing the same thing. So you got the rudiments playing, the rhythm, doing the same thing the entire time. Just because it feels right and it grooves right, okay? And that's all the MIDI that I played. So I played all this with my fingers as well. So if you look at my pads, those are my fingers. Okay, so we got three different bass drums. Okay, we got a snare, and I just chose one snare because I like the pop. I'll probably add a new snare later. And then we got some hi-hats, and then we got a ride, cymbal, okay. Play it with that sample again. Okay, all right, so now let's just talk about what these drums are doing and let's see exactly what they're doing rhythmically. All right, so I'm gonna mute pretty much everything except for the bass drums. Okay, so they're very unique time. So I'm gonna zoom in just to the beginning. Let's play it again. Okay, so I got it playing on beat one and then it's doing an upbeat in between beat two and three and then I got it playing on beat three. So it's going one, two, and three. So it's going one, two, and three. One, two, and three. And then we got another 
beat, we got it on beat two, and we got it on another upbeat, and then we got it on a solid beat one of measure three. And I know it looks complicated if you've never seen this before, but it's all four, four time. You have your measures, and then you got four beats in your measures, okay? But that's what my bass drums are doing. And then I mixed it up, so it just changes throughout. It's doing similar stuff, but it's changing. And once again, I want to boost it. I want these to sound a little better. And right now I'm just showing you the bare bones, the framework of this track. It's not even 100% complete. It's complete enough to show you what's do what it's doing and how it's working, all right? Now let's add some hi-hats just to give it some more rhythm. Okay. So I'm gonna play the metronome just so you can know what time signature I'm in. So the metronome was that click. If you remember, it was the So let me just play that real quick. Now you're probably wondering, why is that so fast? I just wanted to play around and I wanted to do the beat in double time. I wanted the metronome to think that this song is in 178.55 BPM, okay? It's a ridiculous number. But if you divide that, you get what the actual time of the drums is. So let me play the, BP, uh, the, the metronome again. Okay. And let me add the drums. Okay, so that's half of that speed. It's slower. It's half of that speed exactly. Okay. And I did that just so it can give it a unique flavor. It can give it a unique rhythmic flavor. Okay. So give that a shot at home if you're trying that. All right, so moving on, let me go ahead and show you the snare. And the snare is always probably the simplest of the drum kit. It's keeping the time. And I'm pretty sure this is on beat. Let me make sure before I say beat three, yeah. So we're on beat three only. One, two, three, four, 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 one. Okay? So that's just giving me a different flavor. Rather than doing it two and four, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Or rather than doing one and three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. It's just doing three. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. Now, that's pretty much broken down. And then I have a ride. The only other thing I have is this ride, and that ride just gives me a little, a little chime. A little chime when I felt I needed it. So listen and watch for this guy if you're looking at my program here. So it just gives you that little chime, a little extra. There it is again. And it's just a 10 bar loop. So it's doing eight, it's doing 10 measures and it's just repeating over and over again, okay? I can get in there and I can make all kinds of different changes and flip it up and do all kinds of different rhythms, which I want to do. But right now, I'm going to keep it real simple. Let's go to the intro and I'll just show you that the drums are a little bit different. So there's nothing till about here. And it's basically just a hi-hat doing the, the quarter note thing. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then the bass drum and the snare come in. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Or you could look at it at eighth notes in halftime if you need to. All right, so now let's move on to the next instrument. Let's move on to the bass right here. So I'm gonna play the bass, 
The bass has different patterns, okay? So the bass is not just like the drums. It doesn't just play one thing and repeat over. There's a couple of different variations, and I think there's two that I use. Let me check. It looks like there's only two. So let me go ahead and play those. Now for the bass, I used an actual bass guitar. So I used an actual fretted bass guitar at home, and I just recorded it. I am a bass player at heart, so I respect all the rhythm section out there. And let's go ahead and hear which one I'm using for the chorus. Okay. So we got that one, right? Now, here's the other variation. Okay, now look at that again. Here are my waves. So you're gonna see it tracking right here. Sustain. Do, 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 sustain, do, do, do. And by sustain, I mean you're holding that note, right? So if someone's singing and they just go la, 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 that's not sustain, right? It's more like a staccato, like string, just quick, la, la. Sustain is where it holds, la. So every now and again, the bass needed that. Play with some drums. Sample. Okay, and at the end I gave it that little that little high pitch boom. If you heard that, I don't know if you guys heard that, but okay. So that's what the bass is doing. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about plugins, and we're gonna talk a little bit about Equalization, to be exact. So e equalization plugins show you the, f the frequency spectrum of your music, okay? Now bass guitar usually takes up, depends on your bass, but it usually takes up like 100 hertz, 200 hertz, and it lives somewhere in this area here, okay? So that's where the bass frequency normally resides. Now you also have harmonic content, so you have the high-end stuff that the bass is giving you. There's stuff that exists there and it lives. And then you got the sub content. And I might be mistaken, but I think our ears can only hear up to like 50 hertz. And then below that, you start to lose hearing. You can't really hear low, low sub stuff. Um, but with the right speakers, you can hear a, a little bit, a little, just a little bit. So here's my bass. Let me just play the bass by itself. Now, this is an, an equalizer plugin, okay? As you can see, just like I said, my bass lives here in like 50, 60, to like 200. That's where like the main meat of it is. And then you move on and you're going into the Ks and it starts to dip, it starts to dip down and not exist. So what I did is I just dipped this frequency at 2K, 2000 kilohertz, so that the, the slide of my bass with my fingers, I don't know, you have guitar players out there, when you're playing an acoustic instrument or a stringed instrument, when you rub your fingers on the string, you get like a what? okay? So that sound isn't necessarily good for a mix. So I heard a lot of that when I played my bass and I made sure to just dip it out. So let me turn off this. It's gonna sound brighter. You hear the difference? So this is more subby, more low. And then this is more brighter because I took off this dip that I did. And listen for the Should be coming. Okay, there was a slight one in there, but trust me, that makes a difference. So I dipped it out a little bit. I probably did too much to tell you the truth. I dipped out way too much, but it's okay. I just wanted to get in there for an example. So that's the bass guitar. 
other than that, we'll touch more on equalizing and plugins later. But other than that, I just added that guitar rig thing that I was telling you guys last time. Okay. Now I know I'm running short on time here. So I want to just move on to the rest of the song. There it is. And just to show you, my bass has this effect on it. Okay. So I'm gonna turn it off. Gone. Doesn't exist anymore. It's super quiet. I'll turn it on. And there's presence. It exists. So that's something I did with the bass. All right, so the last little things I did with this track, let me play those three parts. Okay. All I did was I added some percussion, I added a shaker. little ear candy, as I like to call it, is at the very back of the mix. It's just this piano. So let's hear this piano real quick. It's like a little Rhodes piano. And that's it. Super simple. Now you probably didn't even notice it was there. And that's kind of the point. I don't want it to be super loud in the mix. I don't want it to be in your face. Blah, damn. I want it to be back there. I want you to hear everything else. So let's see if you can hear it now. Okay. So that just exists. That's just there. I also did the same, but I did a variation. So something different in verse two. Okay, so now that you know that, that it's there, try to listen for it. Okay. All right, so we have all of that stuff going on in this track. And I know probably when you first heard it, it sounded a lot more basic than what it actually is. But when you get into hip hop music and you have a hip hop producer that knows what they're doing, they take their time to craft all kinds of different energies and frequencies and vibe into their song that makes it what it is, okay? And the simmer, the simmer section before I leave is just that. I just wanted it to mellow out. I wanted everything to just chill out and play simply by itself. So let me just play that real quick. Okay, so that just mellows out. I think that's a good place for an MC to just spit a message without necessarily rapping hard, or maybe they just want to keep rapping, and they want to take over the song. They don't want the song to be taking over their voice, if that makes any sense. Okay, so there's plenty more I need to do to this track. There's plenty more I can get into and tell you guys about, but that's my time, I gotta go. So I appreciate you guys. I thank you guys for letting me in your home. My name's Chromatophore. Take care and I'll see you in the next video soon. Peace.